The TikTok Riz Party video is probably one of the most complex videos I've seen. The group of Zoomers, oh, I'm sorry, distinguished gentlemen, are more than just sweaty teenagers that drank one cup of apple juice thinking it was alcohol and probably smells like Dear Zavaj and X body spray. No, these characters have layers, complex writing, and depth to them. The video shows us the societal hierarchy and the group dynamic from this group of teenagers. And today, we'll break that down. Let's first look at the character in the middle and is taking most of the screen, the blue tie kid. Now, the blue tie kid is the leader of this group of guys. He's always in the front. He's the center of attention. He shoves some of his peers away so he can be in the front. Everyone's looking at him and the people around him is obviously looking for his approval. He's essentially the alpha male. He's more or less Dutch Vanderlint, where he's the leader of this group of misfits, and everyone wants to have his attention. Suppose that you were sitting down at this table. The colognes are in front of you. Which cologne would you take? The Deer Savage on your left, or the Axe Body Spray on your right? The one on your left side, or the one on your right side? Usually you would take the one on your left side. That is correct too. But in a larger sense in society, that is wrong. Perhaps I could substitute society with the group leader status. The correct answer is that it is determined by the group leader who takes his or her own cologne first. Yes, if the first one, which is the group leader, takes the cologne on their right, then there's no choice but for others to take the right cologne. The same goes for the left. Everyone else will take the cologne on their left because they have no other option. This is society. The dude on his right, dubbed as White Shirt Kid, he is most definitely the group leader's right-hand man, as seen as how he's always next to him. Not only that, but the group leader seems to respect his right-hand man, as he doesn't seem to push him around while dancing, as seen here where he pushes some minor characters. The White Shirt Kid may also be the muscle of the group, judging by his build, and he seems to know that, as he is shown easily pushing minor characters around with his strength, so he and the group leader could have the spotlight. His dynamic with the group leader is almost akin to Gus Fring and Mike Urbantrout's dynamic in Breaking Bad, or Caesar and the Legate from Fallout New Vegas, where they respect each other, but the leader knows that he can be overpowered easily and destroyed by him. If anything, he has second in command and probably has more power than he knows he has. The next main character we'll look at is dubbed Tomato Face. He's called that on how red his face is from all the underage drinking. Tomato Face is probably one of the lowest characters in this group's hierarchy. Even with his build, he is easily pushed around by the second in command. He tries to get the group leader's attention, but he continues to fail at that. He is shown always on the corner. Unfortunately, that would probably be his fate for the foreseeable seasons, as nothing more than a minor character trying to prove himself. But with that, if he gets a good arc, then he might become one of the best characters in this saga. Before we get to the best character, we'll look at some honorable side characters. First, we have Group Leader Clone. I call him Group Leader Clone because on how much his clothing and his dance moves is literally a copy of the Group Leader's drip. There's speculation that he's not really part of the group, but if he's part of the group, then he could be one of the Group Leader's most trusted henchmen, right next to White Shirt Guy. Is there a lore reason why he's trying to be a carbon copy of Group Leader? What is he stupid? Another honorable mention is Mustache Guy. He is seen behind the group leader and is always pushed around by him. He has a minor role in this group and can be shrugged off as one of group leader's minions. And finally, arguably one of the best characters and is the surprise main character, Turkish Quandale Dingle. During the early episodes, Turkish Quandale is seen being neglected by everyone and is always on the background. But when the dance-off arc dropped, he is seen battling not just almost everyone, but is seen challenging the group leader. With his technique, tongue out Riz technique, <laughs> tongue out Riz technique, he no-diffs several of the group leader's disposable goons, 
Even White Shirt Kid is surprised by such movement. Turkish Quandale is seen almost defeating the group leader in this arc. Seeing him grow to a loser character, to a character who challenges the Alpha Sigma of the group, that makes him the main character of the story. But if he's the protagonist, then who's the antagonist? That's right, the group leader. For Turkish Quandale, the group leader is the big bad that he has to face and dethrone so he can have group leader status. It won't be easy with how many disposable minions he has and not to mention a very powerful right hand man. But with his tongue <laughs> but with his tongue wrist technique and if he could convince Tomato Face to fight alongside him and knowing that White Shirt Kid is impressed by his techniques then maybe he can convince him to fight alongside him too. What do you guys think? Can Turkish Quandale defeat the group leader and secure group leader status? Or will he fail and get kicked out of the group? Also, comment down below your favorite character if you made it this far into the video. Subscribe to watch more Brain Rot content. Question! Mr. Kimura, why did you decide to become a high school teacher? Cause I like high school girls, that's why!